Hickok 45 here with this old junker, 104 years old. Obviously, you wouldn't be able to fire it, right? Old piece of metal that old. Ha ha ha, guess again. Guess again. Woo, hit that cinder block. Yeah, 45 slugs. It'll even smoke pot, Oop. unless it's empty. <laughs> Let's load it again before I uh, retreat. All right, I was ready to smoke some pot. I was all in the mood. There we go, that's better. Smoke some cinder. We're at it. <laughs> Isn't that what 45 slugs are for? Yes, 1918. Been a while, been a while. Uh, good old 1911, truly a 1911, not an A1. This is chapter two. You've seen the first video on this gun, or have you? <laughs> Here's the first guy. <laughs> this is John's, that's the one you saw. Wow, they look a little bit alike, don't they? Yep, that's because they were both uh, made in 1918, World War I, Colt uh, 1911s. And uh, not too long after that video, I found one and I just had to have it, okay? So that's why we have two of them. And that's why chapter two is actually a different firearm. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's weird. And I've had this for two years, hard to believe, just now getting around to it. Might have brought it out on a Sunday morning, Sunday uh, shoot around. But yeah, it's been two years, uh, hard to believe. Uh, 45. Uh, you know, John gave a lot of the history. We've done uh, lots of historical videos on these 1911s and A1s and everything, and uh, won't rehash all that. Chapter two shooting and just showing this to you again and having some, some fun with it. Uh, and I'm just gonna shoot it. I tell you, I, I love these old 1911s and the history of these firearms is uh you know it, it just uh just reeks of history this is the uh we've had this one out before you've seen this is the 1918 that told the remake kind of thing reissue colt did in about 19 whatever uh no no 2010 or 11 long in there and uh uh they did a great job i mean they got all the same markings essentially they're really very 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 close so this one does say world war one on it i don't know why they didn't put that on these maybe they didn't know there was going to be a world war ii yet so but uh, other than that man they're just uh, duplicates and and again you know we talked about that is that a clone i don't know it's cold they just reissued the the same gun right so they're the ones that made these and we're going to have some fun with it shoot it a little bit and uh talk a little bit more about it uh shooting two and three so uh, let's take some shots. Uh, now, please forgive me. I brought the uh, modern mags. I don't have a lot of vintage mags. I, I have one that came with it. It is really the vintage. I don't think I even have it out here, but you know, the two-tone and all that. Uh, but, uh, when I, oh, it's in my pocket, the one I did have. I had one without a base pad at least. And I've got some Colt mags like that. But it, you know, it doesn't matter. The gun just needs some good mags that work in it. And, uh, I mean, you know, if you cannot appreciate the beauty of these old war horses, what is wrong with you? United States property. Am I allowed to own that? I guess I am. I'm in the United States. And uh, model of 1911, U.S. Army. That's a beauty, isn't it? Wow. And, you know, John's is just, just, just like it. These might be a little more worn, but, I mean, they're almost duplicates. They're almost twins. Just twins. Essentially, they are. I got a better trigger on mine, but I mean, they are basically twins. So, uh, model of 1911 U.S. Army. Pretty, pretty cool. So, uh, let's take some more shots with this thing. You know, sights are uh, pretty lame, aren't they? <laughs> and that gave everybody a pretty good excuse for not being able to shoot them. As I pointed out before, a lot of old country boys and just anybody that was in the military back then, a lot of them grew up shooting, but it's mostly revolvers or rifles long guns that kind of thing they weren't really most of them uh familiar with semi-auto pistols so it's quite a change and uh, you know, plus large caliber so I, I can see why it was difficult training us guys on this 
Oh, there's a skillet. Don't tell my wife. Look at that bullseye on the skillet. Yeah, I'll put it back in the cabinet after we finish with it. She'll never notice. <laughs> nice, I'm already getting slide bite. <laughs> John Browning, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Such a perfect gun and you allowed that. Oh, oh we got to put one on the gong with it, don't we? All right, 104 years later, Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if we can get a buffalo with it. All right. Still ready for duty. Ready for duty. Ready to be deployed, isn't it? So cool, cool gun. Uh, I was at uh, Valor Ridge uh, with Reed Hendrick for a, a pistol course in December two years ago. And uh, so it's really his fault that I, uh, I spent the money on this. He owes me because I would not have bought this gun if I hadn't gone to that pistol course because I, 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 there was a gun show in Knoxville. So I spent the night in Knoxville coming back, went to the gun show before I came on home. and. It followed me out of there. I couldn't. I couldn't walk away from this particular one, and uh, so it's his fault. Uh, there's a little blemish right here. You know, it's not perfect, uh, but uh, I mean, just other than that, you know, it's just really, really nice. And, uh, and you know, me, I don't. I'm not looking for museum pieces. Uh, I, I just want uh, a, a piece that is in pretty good shape and uh, is working in working order. You know. So for those of you who are maybe are kind of new to guns, and there's so many of you out there, this is a 1911. And then in 24, they added a couple of things, shorter trigger, arch mainspring housing, a little bit better sights, I think, some things like that. Uh, beaver tail, a little more of a beaver tail, so you don't get that. Look at the blood. Look at it. I'll be crying within 10 more rounds. <laughs> I get hammer bite from a, an original 1911. Well, they, they fixed that on the... Now, it's not like a competition beaver tail or high ride at brown or something like that, but at least you don't get a uh, hammer bite. And I do get hammer bite, as you can see. I'm bleeding for you. You're worth it. Uh, so, uh, but anyway, you know, the, the, the A1 around 1924, they made those few modifications. And then, you know, that didn't change for a long, long, long time. And then, of course, now today, we these guns are just, uh, they're the same gun essentially, but. You know, people put all kinds of things on them and much better sights and you, you see uh, you see them out there. There's even a 2011 double stack mags and all that sort of thing, but it's still basically the 1911, one of the most shootable firearms on the planet and ergonomic. So, again, don't tell him about I'm shooting these modern stainless mags. Wow. All right. And, you know, this thing, I have had it, like I say, two years. <laughs> I have fired it several times. And I have not had a, a bobble with it. it uh, no malfunctions like today. Let's see if we can pop those two liters. See if we can find those itty bitty sights. Yeah. Oh, not bad. I'm going to try to hit a pig right in the middle of the field over there. We'll knock it down. Let's try this target here. Of course, back when these were new uh, issued, they were trained to shoot with one hand. I need a horse so I can hold the reins in my left hand and just reach out there. Mm. Mm. Yes. I uh, really feel sorry for folks who have not fired a 1911. And especially feel sorry for the people that hang out on the internet and trash them. <laughs> like get a life try one out sometime oh wow that went crazy uh let me shoot uh let me shoot that bowling pin mm, 
not the tree. Those old slugs knocked the arms around pretty well. Click. That didn't hold the mag back, but the slide back. All right. We'll forgive it. We'll forgive it. I'm not going to overshoot it. Uh, you know, I don't know if there's anything else you need to know. Just wanted to bring it out and show you all. I, I feel kind of guilty having it so long and keeping it hidden from you. Because many of you, who obviously, maybe, well, not obviously, but many of you who don't own a 1911 yet, you, you really do appreciate them and you appreciate the history. And uh, they're all cool, uh, new ones, old ones, and whatever, even souped up ones. But these, are, to me, are really special, the USGI ones uh, that GIs carried. And, uh, you know, if they could only talk and speak and tell the stories of where they were carried. So, uh, you know, you've got a really neat gun and uh, well designed, do I, do I have to tell you. And it's still popular today. And, and, and you can see it's still very, very shootable. And look at the history of that thing. I mean, I, I'd feel comfortable carrying that thing, because I've probably said that before, any one of these three in, in a, well, holster, belt holster, shoulder holster, as a defensive pistol. Not, not you know, think anything about it, uh, not at all. Because if I ever had to save my life with it, I'm not gonna worry about a little hammer bite, you know? Uh, so, just, just a wonderful pistol. Gosh, we did a big celebration in, in 2011, I remember, for the, for the 1911. And uh, that's been a while already, hasn't it? So, we'll do another one in uh, 3011. Okay. What needs to be shot that hasn't been shot? Anything? Well, let's go over there and get that ram. Yeah, well, let's pop the gong again. Whoops. Yep, I knew I flinched on that shot. How about a plate? <laughs> Sweet old gun, and it works, and it still hasn't malfunctioned. Uh, so, I, I appreciate uh, whoever carried this. We feel in a way like we're honoring, you know, whoever carried this thing by by taking care of it, keeping it alive. We're the curators of these things, and then bringing them out, shooting them occasionally, you know, and keeping them wiped down and clean, and bleed a little bit on them, and, you know. Uh, you know, on a range, you know, we can't complain about bleeding on a shooting range, right? Uh, somebody might have really bled that was carrying this thing. So, uh, anyway, 1911, a real 1911, and an original 1911, hence the title. Uh, we tend to call all these 1911. Some people get wrapped around the axle about that. Oh, it's not an actually an 1911, it's an A1, uh, Hickok, you know. They're 1911s as a group, but this is actually a true 1911, the model number. In fact, it says right on it, yeah, model of 1911. So, uh, beautiful gun, beautiful piece of history, and uh, I know most of you uh, really do appreciate these things. You don't have to carry them, they don't have to be a pocket pistol or your everyday carry. They're just cool. Life is good. Oh yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it? Uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at TalonGunGrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastol, uh, Dad has been using Ballastol for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to Ballastol.com, TalonGunGrips.com. And also, while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the Internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter. 
the real Hickok 45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok 45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on Gunstreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.